Today we're going to be talking about how to create daily assignments. I use these assignments as my morning work. This is instead of using something like iXL or uh, online platform where students can input assignments and it grades, grades it for them automatically. It does take a little bit of work at the beginning, but once you've done it once, you have it for next year and you, know, you can save yourself some time. So let's get started. Um, in the last video, we talked about how we created our, our Google Classroom. Um, if you get into this classwork section, all we need to do now is hit the button that says create where you're going to create an assignment. The way I like to label my assignments are morning work, week one, and I call it day one. I mean, this does depend on, on you know where you're at, but this is the way I like to keep track of my information. I'll give some instructions, please. Complete morning work before 8.15 a.m. Uh, to do that, you can set yourself a due date. I will say today is Wednesday and we'll give it a specific time, 8.15 a.m. What this does, it will tell you if a student submitted it late or if they submitted it uh, early, but it will give you um, information on that specific time, what time they finished it, uh, if they did it, or if they did not complete it. So once you got all the information done, let's create our first Google form. Hit this little create button and hit the word forms. This will load let's give ourselves let's give it again the date the title which is morning work week one day one all right hit this little button right up here it's going to hit that up now what we want to do is i like to keep things color coded for quizzes and assignments i like to keep it um kind of urgency so i, I like the color red for urgency now where do i get my questions from and how do i input questions well I like to use my math minutes. So, um, you know, I just found this online. I also I purchased the book as well. But what you can do is input this into a Google form and then have it grade itself while while students complete it. Now, you will not be able to input all the inf all the questions, but most of them you will. So we'll start with this one right here where it says circle the number that has four in the tens place. This is for sixth grade, by the way. So we're going to go right here, ask ourselves a question. Instead of circle, we're going to say choose the number that is in the tenths place and we have these numbers 324 so we have 324 we had 24 we had 4321 4321 and then we had 49 49 all right so it says the question says choose the number that has a four in the tenths place now it looks like does this one no 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 it's just this one so only one answer is here what we need to do is we can hit the button that says required that means they cannot move forward if they do not answer this question uh, but most importantly because this is going to be an assignment that is graded what you want to do is you want to come up here hit this little settings button we're gonna to go to quizzes and we're gonna make this uh, make this a quiz now there are a few options you can have right here First option says uh, release the grade. So basically this will send them their grade right after they submit it or after manual review. I like to do this just because, you know, some students will share answers with other students. And that way I wait for everyone to be completed and then I release the answers. Now, if you want to do it immediately, you can see which questions they missed and then not give them the correct answers. But I feel like this is not productive. I like students to see what they got wrong and why they got it wrong by seeing the correct answers. We'll hit on presentation. We'll hit the shuffle progress progress bar. Also shuffle question order. The reason I do this is students that like to work together and share answers. Sometimes it might be a little bit more difficult for them to do that if the questions are shuffled. Uh, other than that, everything else should stay about the same. Uh, and I also limit it to one response. I do not allow them to submit more than once. One more thing I suggest you create is always create a name section for students and make it required. This way, uh, just in case they are not on a school computer or their personal email, they will always need to put their name in here. So we have our first question inputted. We have the question says, choose the number that has a four in the tenth place. We know the answer is here. So let's create an answer key. 
this is going to be worth one point you can make it worth as many points as you want and we are going to choose the correct answer which is 49 and then press done we're gonna make that required let's make another question please all right so this one says circle the set of lines that are parallel uh, as much as I would like to do this I just feel like it is a little bit too much work to you know cut these out paste them into the question so I'm not going to do that what I'm going to do is question number three it says write these numbers write these decimals in order from least to greatest so let's do that right now all right write these numbers or the students can they can write them I just find that's more work so I just say choose the decimals or sorry let's place the decimals in order from least to greatest so now we're just going to give them a few options press copy all right so there is one option let's change that option up okay let's try another option this time we'll do it like this All right, now let's see if we have a correct answer. Zero, three, from least to greatest. All right, it looks like this is the correct answer. All right, we got, let's do one more. And we're just going to put this right there, least to greatest. All right, now let's do an answer key. Again, we'll make this worth one point, least to greatest. It looks like. This is the correct answer right here. We'll hit done. Make this required. Let's add another question. Our says write the fraction that represents the shaded boxes. Again, you can do this and I'll show you how you can do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little screenshot of this. All right. We're going to go right here and we're going to input this question. It says write the fraction. All right. Write the fraction that represents the shaded boxes all right so what we need to do is we need to add a picture that little picture right there we can upload it so i'm gonna take this upload it in here now if i'm moving too fast just please comment in the in the comment section below and i will be more than happy to help you all right so let's see let's give this one point it says write the fraction that represents the shaded boxes one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's ten boxes three shaded boxes so it looks our answer is going to be three out of ten all right mark any other answer incorrect so that is the only answer if you wanted to and if you thought students might do it in word form you can say three tenths but I usually tell them if you want to put more information, you can do that. But keeping it like this is simple. Okay, let's add another question. All right, so now we have five plus blank equals 12. Let's input that into another question. So let's see, it said five plus blank equals 12. Now let's give them a few answers. Let's see, five, seven, nine, 11. Again, we're going to make this question required. Let's go to our answer key. We're going to hit worth one point. And it looks like that is our correct answer. We'll hit done. Let's add another question. It says complete the pattern. All right. Copy. Let's complete the pattern. One, five, nine, thirteen. It looks like the pattern is going up by four. So let's give them a few options. 15, 16, 17, 18. Make this required. Set an answer key. Make this worth one point. Looks that is our answer. Press done. Let's add a few more questions. What is the area of the number of squares in the rectangle to the right? Okay. Let's copy this question. Let's add another question here. But this time, and but because it won't be to the right just like this question right this was below it so we're going to say what is the area number of squares in the rectangle let's say below all right let's take a quick screenshot of that so 
there we go. Let's add an image. Here it is. Drag and drop. There we go. All right, it looks like our answer. Let's add some numbers. Let's remove that. So it says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So the answer should be 12, 4 by 3. So I'm going to give that. And the answer should be 12. Mark any other answer incorrect. And done. Also, please don't forget to make sure that the it is required. Let's add just a few more questions. According to the chart, how many desks are in column A? This is another great question I would like to use. All right, let's make a little screenshot. Let's add another question. Here we go. Column A, let's add the picture. All right, so let's add some answers. We'll go one, two, three, four, or five. Let's add an answer key. We know that the answer is five. Let's choose that, press done. Make sure it's required. Let's add a few more questions. All right, the last ones are just multiplication, nine times four, nine times seven, nine times nine. So let's add those in. What is nine times four? Let's do a short answer. And we'll say, Make sure it's required. Hit answer key. Oh, sorry. Not yet. Let's make it multiple choice. All right, we'll do nine times four. Let's say 28, 27, 42, 36. Get the answer key. We know the answer is 36. Hit done. Let's add another question. Nine times seven equals. Let's make it multiple choice, and we'll do 56, 49, 63, and then 70. To make sure the question is required, we'll hit answer key. We know the answer is 63. Hit done. Let's add two division problems, 7 or 28 divided by 7. So let's add that in, 42 divided by 7. All right, 28. Um, now, if you don't know where you can find the division sign, you can just go to Google and type in the word division sign, division symbol. You can highlight, boom, and paste it in there. 28 divided by 7 e equals. And we'll make this multiple choice. Let's give it a few answers. We'll do 3, 4, 5, or 6. Let's hit an answer key. We know that 28 divided by 7 is 4. We'll hit done. We'll just copy and paste this so we can make one more question. And this time we'll do, let's do 42 divided by 7. We know that multiple choice. Let's do 5, 6, oh, 5, 6, 7, or 8. The answer key. Uh, we know 42 divided by 7 is 6. Hit done make it required make it required all right looks like we have our first daily assignment now it did take me about looks about like 10 minutes to get this done but once you get this done it's just as simple as importing it for the next class so once students respond to this um, they'll be right here so we can go back to our classwork we see we can refresh this really quick here it is let's go edit the assignment is there. The assignment is here. This is going to be worth seven points. It's due at 8.15. The topic will be our daily check-in. And then I'm just going to hit the word that says assign. Your first assignment will be ready for the students to check in. And once they log in, it will pop up right here. So let's go back here. Let's see. And you see how we talked about stream in the last one. Uh, Mr. Negru posted up a new assignment, MWW1D1. So we just created our first assignment. It is right here. You can also see if we go here and we hit the word 
calendar, notice that it pops up. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to import this calendar into our Google site. Thank you for your help and thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Check, out, check us out for the next video.